Hello and welcome to this talk. Now one of the things that's been a little bit frightening in this pandemic was when we first started learning about multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children and this does affect a very small minority of children. Now I'm just going to start off with some data from the CDC in the United States that gives us some information about this. And this looks like pretty good news. So here we have the original sort of April 2020 outbreaks. And then this would be the alpha wave here, round about the uh, end of uh, beginning of 2021. Then things went down and then this is the this is the delta wave here. So this is the uh, multi-system inflammatory syndrome cases and that's up there 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. This line here is the uh, the average moving cases of uh, diagnosed COVID. So we see that they were the number of cases there, number of cases there during Delta. And we see that in Omicron, the number of cases has way been way, way higher. But so far, the number of cases of inflammatory syndrome in children has gone down. Now, no one's saying this data is complete. We know it's not. But we do seem to be getting a downward trend. So it's looking like from this provisional data that as well as Omicron causing less severe in a vaccinated population generally, it's also causing less cases of this uh, MISC, multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children. So because overall there's been 4.6 million children <laughs> diagnosed with COVID this year in the United States. And when these numbers started absolutely scooting up, then people were really quite concerned because they knew in the past there was a certain number of uh, children with paediatric inflammatory syndrome following the, the large number of cases. So anxiety was pretty high, but so far it's looking pretty good. So what is this? It's a rare but serious condition associated with COVID-19 in which different parts of the body become inflamed. Different parts of the body. So it's multi-system. It can affect different systems. So like the renal system would be a system, the cardiovascular system would be a system, the, the respiratory system would be a system, the circulatory system would be a system. And syndrome means it can have a wide variety of possible uh, presentations. Now the total cases of multi-system inflammatory, uh, multi inflammatory syndrome in children, cases in the United States, always a bit out of date the CDC data, but that's the total number of cases that there have been. So this number of children have got six, 6,851. And tragically, in the United States, there's been 59 deaths. Now, I think there's been one or two more this month. Not many, but there's been some more that month. So that, that will be over 60 now, I would imagine. But that's the latest CDC data. And child cases in the pandemic altogether, 12.5 uh, million children have been diagnosed with COVID. So we see 12.5 million children diagnosed with COVID. We see 6,851 cases of multi-system inflammatory syndrome in children, and we see 59 deaths. Now, it's easy to say that's a tiny amount compared to that, and of course it is. But uh, losing children is the worst possible um, is the worst possible thing that can happen. But so far, that's looking good. We are waiting for a CDC update in that data, but it's looking it is looking promising, and it's been on decline really for so, for some time. So that, that's, that's looking hopeful. Now, death rate in children overall, thankfully, has been very low with this virus. There is no absolutely biological reason why this pandemic should have spared children, which it, to a large extent it has, but it has. Um, so it's fortunate that the virus didn't um, cause more severe disease in children than it has. Very low death rates in the states. Depends on the state. So of all COVID deaths, um, about three states, it's essential. Well, it is zero. That's probably reporting errors. It's probably near a point, naught, naught, uh, one or something like that. One in a thousand deaths, something like that. Um, but, but pretty low. Now, this multi-system inflammatory syndrome, children, median age is nine years. Half of the children were between five and 13 60% were male. 59% reported patients were Hispanic or Latino or black. So um, largely disproportionately affecting those populations. Black population over 2,000. Hispanic Latino population 1,746 cases. 
98% of patients had a positive test for the result of SARS coronavirus 2, and the other 2% had um, they were been in contact with someone who had SARS coronavirus 2. Let's just look at a little more data here from the CDC. That just shows this in graphical form. So that's a multi system inflammatory syndrome in children uh, by race and ethnicity. So uh, white non Hispanic, so they're whites, blacks, non, black non Hispanic, Hispanic, Latino, and also other minority groups uh, in the United States. But we see the black population and the, the uh, Hispanic population disproportionately affected. Uh, more boys than girls affected. No obvious reason for this, but it is the case. And here's the age, so not many children under the age of one. Um, depends when you count. I mean, this can occur in older people as well, but 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 norm, norm, most of the cases we see are in five to eleven year olds. Although it can occur to some extent in the young adults in the sixteen to twenty year old uh, group grouping. Uh, now, multiple inflammatory syndrome can occur weeks after COVID-19, even if the child did not know they had it. So th the point is, because the data from the CDC is delayed, and because there's a delay of two to six weeks anyway, it could be that this increases somewhat, and I expect it will increase somewhat. But that we're already getting this downward s signal after this massive up spike. It's still looking fairly fairly promising. Now we have to have a high index of suspicion for poorly children of course. So what are we looking for? Well um, this actually is presenting as kind of like a, almost like a cytokine storm sepsis. So fever, so uh, 38 degrees centigrade, I don't know, that would be a hundred and something in Fahrenheit. So a high, a high, basically a high fever or highish fever that lasts for a while. Shock and uh, shock means the tissues of the body aren't being properly perfused. Hypotension is low blood pressure. There can be severe cardiac illness, such as inf inflammation of the myocardium, inflammation of the lining of the heart. The coronary arteries that supply the myocardium can be uh, dilated. They can be aneurysm formation, which is a weakness in the wall of the vessel. There can be new onset right or left ventricular dysfunction, which means the right side of the heart pumping blood to the lungs doesn't work properly, or the left side of the heart pumping blood to the body doesn't work properly. There can be heart block where the message is not getting through. So in the heart we have the um, we have the top chambers, we have the atria, and we have the ventricles. The impulse arises here, and it needs to go down through to get down into the bottom parts of the heart. And if there's a blockage here. That would be an atrioventricular block, meaning that the lower part of the heart doesn't get the electrical impulse that's needed for normal contraction. Conversely, there can be ventricular tachycardia, which is a very fast heart rate of the ventricles. All, all, these are all very, very nasty conditions. Another feature can be rash and non-purulent conjunctivitis, inflammatory reasons, presumably. New onset neurological symptoms such as encephalopathy, which is disease of the brain, seizure, which is fitting, meningeal symptoms, which is symptoms similar to meningitis, such as photophobia, uh, neck stiffness, severe headache. Peripheral neuropathy can include the Guillain Barry syndrome, which can lead to paralysis. So we can see there's a lot of different presentations that can manifest as a as this multi-system inflammatory syndrome there can be abdominal pain or diarrhea <clears throat> there can be thrombocytopenia which i think we know is the low level of platelets in the blood elevated inflammatory markers in the blood if you look for it like um c-reactive protein and other inflammatory markers and there's usually a positive uh, sars coronavirus test or recent infection is usually diagnosed, but, but not always. The fact that 98% of cases do seem to have a diagnosis does seem to indicate that this is more likely to occur in patients that have been diagnosed, and they're the ones that are more likely to be symptomatic. Now, that isn't written down anyway in the CDC data. That's just me inferring that, but other parts of the CDC data and other papers from the American Heart Association do say that this can follow minimal or, or uh, minimally symptomatic or even asymptomatic infection. So it is possible. Uh, 
Infectious Diseases Division Chief, Children's Hospital, Washington, D.C. It always follows the same pattern. She says um, it's always two to six weeks after we see the spike from whatever variant it is. So two to six week delay. So again, if we if we look at if we look at this now, um, we we are kind of we are we have kind of got that now because Omicron's been going around since December, and now we're well into February. So you would be expecting to see more cases now, um, e even with the delayed data from the from the CDC. Um, and then we're on the lookout for multi system inflammatory system in children. Sure enough, it comes. Or it has done in the past as we can see it's been associated with these other outbreaks <clears throat> or these other increasing cases um, then she says some of the motor system inflammatory system in children patients have been vaccinated but the vast majority are not okay um, how that equates to the risk benefit analysis for uh, vaccination in children i'm not equipped to say at the moment but that's what she says uh, we thought it may, we may see an uptick with Omicron, but we haven't. So this is Washington, D.C. They are not seeing an increase in cases. So on the ground, the people that are actually reporting uh, this data to the CDC, um, they're not seeing it. In most cases, they're not seeing it. Now, it is patchy in different parts of the states, but so far they're not seeing it. Pittsburgh, you know, luckily in our area, we're not seeing a surge I'm very grateful. So uh, obviously that is good. The doctors are very grateful. But Seattle, there seems to be a bit of an increase. They're seeing more cases since mid-December. And uh, fortunately, they are saying that uh, most children with multisystem inflammatory syndrome begin recovering in the first week after hospital discharge and fully recover heart function within three months. So the prognosis is good, but there is tragically a, a small proportion of uh, of deaths. But so far, it's looking like Omicron is being uh, is not causing the surge that we have seen in the alpha in the alpha wave or in the uh, the delta wave. But it is only right to keep a high index of suspicion observe our children carefully and if we're worried about them take them for medical uh, appraisal as soon as possible because even although there's not much in the way of specific treatments supportive treatment that paediatric doctors and nurses are skilled in giving can be 100 percent life saving so that's the review of that a lot of people have been worried about it but so far the news in omicron is good cases are remarkably low and uh, we will keep an eye on that now i'm just going to give a quick update now from our community health project in africa now one of the things we're trying to do here is we are trying to um we're trying to improve sustainability as well as health so we're looking at things like we're costing out solar panel projects and uh things like that to improve quality of life but also to do so uh, sustainably that's uh, that's part of the philosophy of of this project so um Mufafa's grandma here has been equipped or is being equipped with uh, solar panels uh, and we're using here with Mufafa's grandma as a model we hope to roll this out to hundreds who knows potentially been be nice to roll it out to, to thousands of people as time goes on depending on on funding becoming available but um i don't know you know if you've ever, you ever been at a remote village and there's no electric light you just can't believe it it's just like you, you can't believe there's no electric light what do you do all evening it's uh it's quite incredible and now with solar panels simple battery systems um we we, we can we can transform that situation and having, having light at night means your working day for example increases from eight hours to 16 hours just marvellous. So let's have a quick look at, uh, at this particular uh, adaptation going on here. This is the outside bulb. It is very bright. And that is the solar panel on top of the house. And now here is inside. Uh, this is the bedroom. And 
see now uh, this is the system here is the battery I don't know how to call this it is a charge controller yeah they have told me that this is a charge controller and that's a bulb she, she now has light in this whole bedroom and then when you come in the sitting room there is also light up there so this is very good uh, because they have placed it so high that it can actually light this side as well where she usually prepares food from uh, we have also an outside bulb this will also help the behind part of the house to be bright hello guys welcome to our channel this is wefafa andrew today is a very special day for me and for my grandmother and all the people around this area uh yesterday uh for you who saw the video that i uploaded uh we brought for my grandmother uh a wheelchair uh, that wheelchair we got it using the money that uh, our subscribers sent us it was the uh, um it was Andrew Malcolm and then Martin. They sent us money specifically for the wheelchair. And then another subscriber of ours sent us money uh, to buy a solar system. And we have brought for her a solar system here today. Uh, it has uh, four lights, right? It has four lights for her. It has uh, a battery. And then we have also brought for her a radio. So she will be able to listen to music both by music and other songs that they play on the radio such that you will have some good time so uh today i will just take you around as they will be working i will show you how they will be uh, installing and how we shall test everything so we have here our engineers <laughs> say hi yeah say hi okay, I think yeah we'll so learn. they are the ones who are going to do the work We'll leave that there. You can watch the full video if, if you'd uh, if you'd like to. That just looked like a fifty watt solar panel to me. Um, and but because it's charging up all day in the sun, then that charges up the battery. That charge controller thing, you'll know more about that than me. It sort of connects between the charges between the char between the the lights and, and the, the solar panel and the battery, and, and somehow controls everything. Um, so so brilliant, and, and that that should go on working for. Oh, there's no reason that why that shouldn't go on working completely sustainably for decades. Um, so there we go. It's just part of the philosophy. We're trying to introduce more uh, sustainability. And as well as that, of course, it massively reduces the fire risk. Um, I was involved in, in building some houses. Well, not me personally, obviously. <laughs> It'd be no good if I tried to build a house. <laughs> but, but we were building some houses in, in, in Kenya and was for some disabled children. And, and uh, some of the children there were using um, lamps and candles. And, and I absolutely insisted that, that we use uh, electrical uh, battery-operated systems because of the fire risk, a terrible, uh, terrible fire risk. OK, so more. I'll put the link onto that if you want to watch the full video. Um, yeah, it's good. So, so basically, I'm um, fairly optimistic about multisystem inflammatory syndrome in children. And, and Omicron does seem to be... Um, producing lots of herd immunity at the lowest cost really we could have we could have hoped for so um fairly optimistic about that and thank you for watching